أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. In this time of year, we relive the sad memory of the master of the free, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. We need to realize that as Muslims, had this great Imam not existed, we would not be able to be proud of freedom because we would have lost this unique horizon of freedom in our history and sources. Freedom should be the first thing any nation would be proud of. And the nation which is missing assurance of the value of freedom and missing such greats who represent this freedom is a nation that cannot be proud of itself before other nations, especially if, on the other hand, its history is also unfortunately filled with oppression and slavery. Allow me to give you an example. The English nation, despite its religious and political history, being filled with teachings and laws towards the farmers and the poor, which made them slaves to nobles and pastors, and despite its history, especially in the Middle Ages, being filled with the harshest display of aggression and oppression as the kings, motivated by the priests, used to punish anyone who disagreed with them by cutting their body parts or burning them alive, Despite all this darkness in the history and sources of the English, the English nation still has the right to be proud of its unique horizon of freedom by saying, for example, five centuries ago, a great man raised from us. He is the Bishop John Hooper who stood by the side of the poor and the weak against the oppression of the king's powers, the nobles, and the hypocritical religious clerks, when he was sentenced to be burned to death, just before they burned him, he said, Carry on with your ruling. Send men and women into the devouring fires and hang on to what you have from power, only that every spark from the fire that you light to burn the righteous people, a great light will be lit, opening the beloved path of freedom to mankind. And this is what actually happened. The more the oppressive rulers burned those who opposed them, accusing them of heresy and deviation, the more it burned its existence and pushed people to rebel more and more for the sake of freedom until freedom won at last and England became today known for freedom. Imagine if the English nation did not have such an example of freedom which was embodied in Hooper and his likes from those who sacrificed, would it be able to be proud as it is today? And would freedom be victorious in this spectacular image. Likewise, imagine, imagine if the Islamic nation 
did not have an example such as, such as Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. How can it be proud when on the other hand, its history is full of monstrosity, oppression, and tyranny, whereby we have a tyrant such as Abu Bakr, who burned people alive, a tyrant such as Umar, torturing people with monstrosity, and a third tyrant such as Uthman, looting public wealth and distributing it amongst his close ones, leaving the average Muslim in hunger and poverty. And a war criminal such as Aisha, who caused mass death in order to take over towns and money and deviate morals. And after them, the kings of Bani Umayyah, who caused streams of bloodshed of innocent, killed, crucified, burned bodies, and raised decapitated heads on spears to frighten people. They were supported by all the hypocritical religious clerks as they brought them false religious excuses to carry out their deeds. Between all this darkness there was this horizon, the horizon of freedom. It is the horizon of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. This remarkable leader of humanity who stood on the side of the oppressed and the poor and against the monstrous rulers and their priests. His sharp words against them still represent the real value of rejectionist Islam. He pointed his words towards the religious clerks saying as for the rights of the weak you have disregarded as for the rights which you think you deserve you have claimed he means that these religious clerks disregarded that the weak used to suffer from deprivation of rights for all these clerks cared about was to ask more wealth and authority for themselves from the rulers, claiming this was their right. It was a foul market. A religious clerk would sell his religion and his humanity to the ruler in exchange for wealth women and land they would pass religious laws for the rulers as they pleased to empower their empire even if that meant allowing killing and torture all to fill their pockets with money imam hussein peace be upon him called for freedom and rebel rebellion from op oppression. It was normal for these hypocritical religious clerks to oppose him, some of which did not even have the bravery or discipline to admit the true reason for the op opposition which was to benefit from the authority, so they claimed their opposition towards Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, was to protect themselves as siding with Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, against the rulers meant endangering their lives and that their tribes who had alliance with the authority wouldn't, wouldn't 
approve of their rebellion so would therefore turn against them and punish them which was a great risk for them here was the mighty stand of bravery from Imam Hussein peace be upon him as he called for sacrifice and risk rebuking their foul ways calling out how can you expect God to grant you paradise and make you neighbors to the prophets without risking your lives without giving money to the weak without your tribes opposing you because of you demanding your rights you do not have mercy on the blind dumb and ill nor do you help the oppressed the, the oppressed against the oppressor rather you ignore them and get closer to the oppressors and flatter them you see them betray the teachings of god and his messenger and his messenger and still do not rebel i fear for you from god's nemesis this call from imam hussein peace be upon him found its echo with only a few noblemen however he did not retreat from this uh, humane revolution he insisted in confronting this tyrannical authority and the hypocritical religious clerk it was known that they would rule him with death but he did not care as he knew that his death would achieve his goal which was freeing the nation bit by bit due to what would be done to him moments before his death he advised his killers with those words that shake the hearts saying if you do not believe in religion and do not fear the punishment of judgment day at least be free in this life of yours it is a freedom then the freedom which Imam Hussein peace be upon him wanted in people even if they did not believe in religion that is because there is no value to religion without freedom as freedom is what righteously guides us to the true religion but Imam Hussein's advice did not get to these monstrous killers. Likewise, as advice does not affect today's terrorists, for example. Those monsters previously killed Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, claiming he is expelled from the religion and today's terrorists also kill the innocent and claim that they are expelled from the religion and this is how the true meaning of religion is changed so instead of it being re a reason of mercy love and fairness to the oppressed it becomes a reason for fright, assault, crime, and exclusion. It is down to all Muslims to return to Imam Hussein's teachings and learn the value of freedom, to rid themselves of this depressing and disgusting heritage 
of tyranny, oppression, and terrorism in the name of religion. As also it is down to non-Muslims to understand that the true Islam is the one Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, embodied. It is the rejectionist Islam which rejects oppression, tyranny, and terrorism and makes its followers ready for sacrifice for the sake of freedom of all humanity, being Muslim or not. True Islam is not the one portrayed by today's terrorists or the corrupt sects which strip an individual of their freedom and honor. Because up to five or six centuries ago, nations were proud of free men who raised amongst, amongst them. So, we as a nation are proud of the master of the free, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, who raised amongst us and taught us the meaning of freedom 14 centuries ago. We are confident that freedom will be victorious at last in the Islamic nation, as it eventually became victorious in the English nation and all other free nations today. Our nation has the right to be proud of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, as had it not had this example of the horizon of freedom, it would not have had anything to be proud of at all. And it is Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, who represents the source of inspiration to continue the path of freedom.